uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, some cool applications of the probability generating function as it relates to a branching process. So in the past couple videos, uh, which we'll link to, um, we've defined a probability generating function, PGF for short. We talked about some of its properties. We talked about uh, how to solve it. Um, now we're actually going to see why it's useful and finally get to kind of how we can use it um, when considering uh, branching processes. So in this video, we're going to solve, uh, we're going to work our way up to solving a branching process, uh, a PGF of a branching process. We're going to start with this exercise. So we're going to imagine some random variable x. We're going to say x is a sum, x is a random variable, it's a sum of random variables. So, um, so uh, x is the sum of y1, y2, all the way up to yn. Uh, the y, I just put yi, like the y, each of the y terms are iid. They're independent, they have the same distribution. And the number of uh, y terms, this underscore n, that's a capital N, means it's a random variable. So it's a random number. X is a random sum of random variables, right? And, and you can kind of see how this is going to be useful for a branching process, because uh, a branching process is basically a random sum of random variables. Um, last thing is that y and n have the support, you know, positive uh, integers, so non-negative non integer supports, so 0, 1, 2, um, etc. And we want to solve uh, the PGF of x, which is what this notation is. So we can start the way I always like to start with this stuff. We can just write the definition. Um, you'll remember that it's just the expected value of the, the timekeeping variable or notekeeping variable s to the power of x. We can expand this with our Lotus uh, expansion. So just the probability that big X equals little x times the function s to the x summed over uh, all of the x values. And what we're going to do here is do some wishful thinking conditioning. Um, it's kind of hard to think about what the what x is going to be if we don't know how many y's there are going to be. If we knew there were two y's or three y's, x would be a lot easier to kind of think about. But we don't know how many y's there are. It's a random number. So we're actually going to condition on that. We're going to condition on kind of the, the number of y's, which basically means we're conditioning on n. And we're going to try to try to go from there. So let's um, do a little conditioning. So probably that big x equals little x conditioned on n equals little n. So I'm conditioning on kind of this occurring. We're going to condition on it. We have to multiply by the probability it occurs. Probability that big N equals little n. And then we still have our S to the X over here. And uh, the reason I left some space here is because now, sorry, that's the, the door jam thing. Now uh, we're summing over N as well, right? We're summing over N as well. We added this other variable that we're like partitioning over. Uh, so, so we're summing over that. Um, so now we have what looks like a bit more complicated term. Um, we have what looks like a bit more complicated term, but actually uh, is going to reduce uh, to something a bit simpler. So first of all, we can see that this term, this probability that n equals n, this has nothing to do with x, right? It's totally agnostic of x, it just has n terms in it. So we can actually take it outside of this summation. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to take, I'm going to drag this and take it outside of this summation. Unfortunately, it means I have to erase everything. So we have that. And now what's cool is that this is probably conditioned in the first place. Given that big N equals little n, right? Given that big N equals little n, we know that big X is just the sum of n, little n, y random variables, right? So we know that X is the sum of y random variables. We know how many random variables there are. Um, and this basically, just like this term, just looks like the PG it is the PGF of X conditioned on there being little n variables, right? It's the same setup. It's probably x equals x, sometimes s to the x, but it's, we have this extra conditioning. We saw in the previous uh, video that the PGF of a random variable that's the sum of many random variables, many IID random variables, is just the product of all those PGFs. And actually, IID doesn't matter, but we have it in this case. So we have that x is the sum of little n y variables, 
you know, the PGF of X is just going to be the product of the PGFs of Y. So stick, stick with me here. See what uh, notation I used. Um, awesome. So what we did here is we said we want the PGF of x, given that there's little n y random variables that sum to x. The PGF of x is going to be the product of n y variables. And I, I'm, I just let me just use y one. Y one. All the y's are i d. I'm just using saying like the first y. So the PGF of the first y to the power of n because we have sub n, we have little n, uh, y variables that add up to x. So, boom, we have, like, this term has been figured out. Right, that's all good. Um, and now we just have this other kind of weird-looking term. Here's where it gets tricky, okay? So we have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. We have the probability that n equals n, and we have this term to the power of n. That kind of looks like this, right? Just replace the n's with x's, right? Like, we have n equals 0, the power of infinity, probability that n equals n, and then we have something the power of n. Here we have s to the power of x. And what's crazy is that this is that this is the PGF of n evaluated at this. So it's the PGF of a PG. So that's kind of weird, you know, take a second to like pattern match in between this and this. Remember we have the probability that big n equals little n. We have something to the power of n. That something is basically what we're, you know, it's the PGF of this something. This something goes, goes in there. Um, so pretty weird. We have the PGF of the PGF, but kind of cool. Kind of an interesting uh, result. And we've solved the PGF of a random variable. That's a random sum of IID variables. So now we can go... Now, uh, we can go, sorry, just looking at my notes here. Okay, now we can write this out. I'm just going to refer to my notes for a second. We're going to say xt equals y1, t minus 1, or, yeah, y2, T minus one dot 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 dot. Um, this is going to be just going to be T minus one. We're going to say Y I T minus one. We can go Sorry, I'm, I'm writing a bunch and I'm going to go over it and I'll, uh, I'll make sure it makes sense. Okay, so we have defined now, we kind of did this, this whole stuff above, basically so we get to this point. We have this branching process x sub t, okay? x sub t is the sum of these, um, uh, these, ran these random y variables. And we have y sub 1 comma t minus 1, y sub 2 comma t minus 1, t minus 1. Um, y one sub my sub one t minus one, that's the number of offspring from the first member, the first cell in the population at time t minus one, right? And this is the y two is the number of offspring from the second member of the population at t minus one. How many of these terms do we have? Well, we have however many cells there are at t minus one, which is x t x sub t minus one. So. Basically, it's kind of the same as up here where we had n terms. Here we have x t minus 1 terms because if we're in, you know, time 10, time t equals 10, and in time 9 there were 30 cells, right? We have to have 30 of these kind of terms adding up the offspring of each cell. Okay, so we have x t is a sum of random variables, but it's a random sum of random variables, right? And we want to find the PGF of x. Um, well, sorry. What's cool 
is that we actually already sort of do the formula, right? We already said, like, if I have x, you know, if the sum of n, then it comes out to this. Uh, the PGF of x, the PGF of x comes out to the PGF of n, um, you know, evaluated at, at, at this value. So we actually can just write our answer using kind of this formula. We have the PGF x t minus 1 evaluated at PGF x 0 plus. And the reason that this works is that um, we have x t minus 1, right? We have x t minus 1 terms. Up here we had capital N terms, so this N becomes x t minus 1. Um, I actually think this should be capital N. Yeah, this should be capital N. Anyways, a random variable. Um, so we have x t minus 1 terms, right? And we're evaluating at this x 0 just means the offspring distribution. Instead of using like x1, x2, this is the offspring distribution of every single. I'm going to write that just to. And um, yeah, so if every single cell has that you know distribution, kind of like in this case we, we use y one. I just don't want to use x one because it's a value that I kind of. Um, so you know this kind of matches like each cell has the same distribution. Here we have y one, here we have x zero, the number n t x t minus one, and what's neat about this is this checks out given this formula. We can continue here because we have like x sub t defined in terms of x uh, sub t minus 1, we can continue going, right? Like we have x sub t minus 1, and we can say this equals, well, actually, uh, we'll write a new equation. We can say that x sub t minus 1 equals the PGF of x sub t minus 1. is basically the same thing, but we, we increment by down 1, right? So if t minus 1 t, we have t minus 2 t minus 1, and we still have that same x0 term there. Um, and, you know, this kind of just makes sense in general, like we plug in t equals 5 or whatever, and, and you can see how it's just, uh, it just kind of kind of goes down from there. But we can iterate all the way to 0, or to, to x0. And what's cool is that if we keep expanding like this, like if we do it again, you know, x, pgf of x sub t minus 2, becomes the PGF of x sub t minus 3 evaluated at this thing. We keep doing that, and eventually we're going to get So eventually, we're going to get all the way down, right? Each of these is going to get down to the x sub zero, x zero term. We're just going to keep kind of pushing it in on each other, um, and we're going to have t of those terms because every step down, we're going to be adding uh, an x sub zero. We basically go from here to here, you know, from t minus one to t minus two, from t to t minus one, and we keep going until you know we have t of these uh, PGF of x sub zero terms. So. Uh, what did we do in this video? We showed, you know, how this is the uh, solution of the PGF of a uh, random variable that's the sum of a random number of random variables. We then applied that to the PGF of a branching process to show that this is the PGF of a branching process x of t at time t. We're going to use this finally <laughs> in the next video to find the extinction probability of a branching process. So stay, stay tuned.